welcome to Talks Take, brought to you by PlaySugarHouse.com. Good morning on this fine, fine Sunday. Are you ready for some football? Nothing gets that pulse up like putting some money down on your favorite NFL team. And no better place to get in on the action than PlaySugarHouse.com. The Washington Redskins already had a standout safety in DJ Swearinger, and now they've acquired HaHa Clinton Dix, who's been really, really good this season. This is definitely an upgrade, a case of the rich getting richer. And there's no doubt this makes the Redskins a better team. But will it help them win this week? I would have liked to see Washington acquire a wide receiver to help stretch the field a bit. But regardless, this is a tough team, especially at home. Coming off a bye and a win, the Atlanta Falcons still have hopes of making the playoffs. But, and this is a big but, the injuries have taken their toll. And even in a wide open NFC, I'm not sure Atlanta has enough horses to keep pace. This is a really intriguing matchup between two playoff fringe teams that couldn't be more different. With all those injuries and on the road, I'll fade Atlanta. The play this week, Washington. The Detroit Lions, fresh off a of shellacking at home at the hands of the Seattle Seahawks, travel to Minnesota to play the rival Vikings this week. It's been a bizarre past few days for Detroit as their trade for a defensive tackle suggested they might be gearing up for a possible playoff run, only to lose one game and now trade their most reliable receiver, Golden Tate. When it comes to running with the ball after the catch, there's nobody better than Tate. The trade of Tate is weird because Detroit is only one game out of the playoffs. This Lions team has its challenges on defense, and I don't see that being rectified anytime soon. But if they'd rely on their running game, and keep their offense on the field, it might actually help the defense. For me, that's the winning formula. Now for Minnesota, it's remarkable how much changes in one year. Untimely mistakes, untimely defensive miscues, all after everything went their way last year. This team hasn't impressed me at all, and the sharp money has been fading them all season. I'll be fading them again this week. Take the points, and Detroit. Upheaval, unrest, turmoil. It's just another day in the lives of the Cleveland Browns. The head coach and the offensive coordinator were fired this past week because they didn't know how to play well together. I get it. Been there. The question for us is simple. How does the team respond this week? Oftentimes, a new head coach gives a team a jolt of energy, and I rarely bet against a team in that situation. In this case, it feels like the line has been adjusted for said jolt. KC? finally didn't cover last week. Yet, they are far and away the superior team this week, and they should cover. But again, I'm leery about betting on a game where there's so much uncertainty. If pushed, I'm taking Kansas City, but I don't love this one. As if you couldn't tell, I'm a fan of the New York Jets. Don't blame me, blame my parents. Now you'd think I'd have a better handle on the pulse of this team, but week in and week out, the only thing we know about the Jets is that they are incredibly inconsistent. It's hard to know which team will show up on a weekly basis. Now on the other side of the field, Brock Osweiler is once again starting for the Dolphins. And contractually, I am not permitted to bet on him. It's in the small print. So, two struggling quarterbacks, lots of injuries at wide receiver. Let's put our hard-earned money on the under. Feels like every time the Ravens play the Steelers, the line is three or right around there. It took the Steelers a while to get going last week, but eventually they covered versus the hapless Browns, much to my dismay. The Ravens have disappointed two weeks in a row, and suddenly the Ravens season is in danger of spiraling away from them. In these games, it often comes down to the more desperate team. And right now, there's no doubt Baltimore is more desperate. Take the Ravens. Who's ready for Fitz Magic? The beard is back. The quarterback shuffle continues in Tampa as Jameis Winston's poor play earns him a seat on the bench. Now clearly, Fitz can move this offense. In fairness, Jameis can too. The question is, who will turn the ball over more? It hasn't been pretty, but my stubborn belief in the Bucks has somehow made us money. And I think it continues. The market was late to support Carolina, as they were probably underrated the first half of the season. But what happens more often than not, when the market corrects itself, it overcorrects. Carolina is a good team, and they deserve to be a favorite against Tampa. But this is too many points. My money is going on the Bucs. Nathan Peterman is starting for Buffalo. 
Enough said. Take Chicago. What? You want more? Buffalo hosts Chicago this week. And it's a shame because Buffalo's defense is playing well enough to have kept this game close. Chicago hasn't exactly lit it up this year, and Trubisky is still struggling to throw the ball down the field. But none of this matters with Nathan Peterman under center for Buffalo. I'm sorry if I'm beating a dead horse, but when you have quarterback play that's this bad, it just makes it impossible to even compete. Frankly, I bet the under two if I didn't think Peterman would throw at least one pick six. That'll do it for this week's edition of Tuck's Take. Enjoy the games, and good luck. Until next time, I'm David Tuckman.